Start getting to get knees. Uh, I like them though. Usually I'll be walking down the street, people would usually ask me about it. I'll find other Hebrews, like, oh man, I like them fringes. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right, let me. Oh, okay. Oh, I hope it doesn't work out. I'm hoping it's working. All right. Anyway, like I said, we read Isaiah 16 last week. I just want to revisit one part of it because it's going to be a very important point in the other subsequent chapters. Is it doing this? Okay. There we go. Okay, now Isaiah 16, and like I said again, we read this earlier. Matter of fact, we're not even going to read the whole chapter. I'm going to read the um, specific point that I want to read. In Isaiah 16 chapter, and I'm going to start at the first verse when it says, Send ye the lamb to the ruler of the land from Selah to the wilderness, unto the mount of the daughter of Zion. So again, every time I see that daughter... That to me is like, it's talking about us. It's not talking about the present Israelites there. It's prophetic. It's like when you see daughter of Babylon, it's talking about this Babylon here. It's not talking about the Babylon of, of this time. But uh, So that's why I always make them two distinctions. Daughter of Babylon, daughter of Zion. Uh, verse 2, it says, For it shall be, and shall is future tense, that as a wandering bird cast out of the nest, so the daughters of Moab, shall be at the fords of Arnon. It says, Take counsel, execute judgment, make thy shadow as the night in the midst of the noonday. Hide the outcast, bray not him that wandereth. Let my outcast dwell with thee. And the outcast is the daughters of Babylon. That's, that's us. We hear the outcast. Let my outcast dwell with thee, Moab. Be thou a covert to them from the face of the spoiler, for the extortioner is at an end. The spoiler ceases; it, the oppressors are consumed out of the land. Verse 5, and in mercy shall the throne be established, and he shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of Dawid, judging and seeking judgment and hasting righteousness. So the fifth verse again lets you know that this is all a future prophecy pertaining to the daughter of Zion, Israel, being hidden in that space. Here it's talking about in Moab. And at the end of the, the time where we're hidden, it says, And in mercy shall the throne be established, and he shall sit in truth, the tabernacle of Dawid, judging and seeking judgment and hasten righteousness. So again, you got a lot of us that are in Israel now, but it's like, to me, it's like a vain thing to be in Israel because, and we're going to read a lot of other scriptures today showing how vain it is to, to be there now because there's no scriptural precedent for us to be there before the time that the kingdom be established. All right, let's go on to uh, Revelation. Let's go on to Revelation, the... The, the 12th chapter. Let's go to Revelation, the 12th chapter. Revelation, 12th chapter. And I'm going to start this at verse 1. Revelation 12, chapter and verse 1, and it reads here, it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman, woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. So we know that this woman represents Israel, because the imagery here is sun, moon, and twelve stars. And when you go back and read concerning Joseph, he had a dream. He told his father the dream, right? And in his dream, he said, the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bow down before me. And he knew that the sun represented Jacob, his father, the moon represented his mother, and the 11 stars represented Israel. Hey, Shalom, Andrea, good to see you on. Uh, represented Israel. So this is 
who this woman represents, the nation of Israel. And um, verse 2 says, And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, seven crowns upon his head. And we read about him last week in Daniel the seventh chapter. These are the Gentile nations that are ruling on this earth. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, Israel, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth the man child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto Elohim and to his throne. So this child, which we know is the Messiah, he is he was is, is prophetically to rule all nations, but at this time he was caught up to the father to the father's throne. Just like in Psalms, it says, "Expect until his enemies be made his footstool." That's what he we, he's waiting on for his enemies to be made his footstool. When his enemies be made his footstool, he's coming back in on his earth to do just what he was prophetically going to do: rule over the whole earth. Um, with the rod of iron, just like it says there. Verse 6, it says, And the woman fled into the wilderness. So this is Israel. She fleeing into the wilderness. Where she have a place prepared of Elohim, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and sixty days. That's three and a half years, twelve hundred and sixty days. So this is where the woman, with well, those who are going to be able to escape at this particular time, and again, going back to Matthew 24th chapter, it says when we see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place, that's the time when we know, hey, it's time to go. We've got to, got to get out of here. We're going to be subjected to whatever he puts upon the earth at that time. And be our will, we don't want to be caught up. But in case we do get caught up, we have to know that if you got to suffer for it because the knowledge is letting you know, hey, you already know this is going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So why allow to be fearful at this time, right? Even though we face the mark of the beast, I don't know, I can't take that mark. But you already knew it was coming. See, a lot of people, you'd be surprised, don't even know about it because they, they choose not to believe it. So when it comes, it's going to come from a dynamic of, of security, just like how we got credit cards and stuff like that, it's going to be another phase to it to them. Ain't no big deal. And right now, you, if you've been looking at the news, you see they're doing all type of plant and chip implantations. All, all of, oh, it's becoming almost mainstream almost. It just haven't gotten totally government mandated yet. But we know it's coming, though, because that's what the scripture done already told us it was coming. And the beautiful thing about that also is that you know, if you would have read this 2,000 years ago and it was written, you wouldn't have had no idea how something like this could be implemented. Right? No idea. You know, it's like this um, old teacher up, up in Chicago, he said, I just quote him because he used to say this all the time. He said that the biggest weapon they had at this time was a catapult. <laughs> they put a big rock in and slug it. And here we hear we reading in the Revelation talking about nuclear war and all this type of stuff. Hey, I had no idea none of these things would um take place. Um so anyway it says here it says uh twelve, it says verse six again, it says, And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of Elohim that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days, and there was war in heaven. Mikael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. And again, it's like they wouldn't have really had a full dynamic of the whole world being deceived at this time, but now we in this time here. And we could clearly see the deception. I mean, they didn't even have a they didn't even have a dynamic of whole world at that time. Cause the whole half of the hemisphere, they didn't know nothing about the Western Hemisphere. They whole world didn't span no more than I don't want you know Asia, 
West Asia at that, not even East Asia, and Europe and Northern Africa. You know, few of them probably even knew much about South Africa at that time. Maybe, maybe not, but the whole world wasn't nowhere near what we know the whole world to be now. But we know that that deception has absolutely, um, Satan had deceived the whole world, basically. And we know he deceived the whole world just by, just by the dynamics of their traditions. All the traditions they do worldwide is contrary to what the scriptures say. Even though they claim to believe in the Bible, but everything that they do is contrary, contrary to it. Uh, it it's, it's pretty deep when you really, really, really dwell on it. It's, it's pretty deep. Thinking about what they knew at this time when this was written and how it is now. Uh, let me see. What did we leave off there? Let's see. Okay, and uh, verse 10. It says, and I heard a loud voice in heaven. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Elohim and power and the power of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our Elohim day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil has come down unto you having a great wrath because he knoweth that he had but a short time and when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child so this dragon is persecuting the, the nation of israel us and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. And here it is. He's just reiterating what he already said mm -hmm. earlier. Right. That she, huh? Yeah, verse right. Right. That she might fly into the wilderness. Into her place. Where she is nourished for a time. Times and a half a time. And we read that in Daniel. The same way it's written. Time, time and a half a time. Mm -hmm. That's the same time frame that that abomination destination is going to be ruling. The same three and a half years where she is nourished for a time, times and a half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of Elohim and had the testimony of Yahshua Messiah. That's a, a good verse there, huh? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Those who keep the right. 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 Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, it just simply lets you know who, you know, who is in the truth, basically. Who is in the truth? You believe in the testimony of Yahshua? You keep the commandments? You got to have both of them. You got both of them. It ain't nothing else. It ain't no church membership, no membership or something. It's just the testimony. Simple as that. If you got that, no come. And this goes right, right with 14, Revelation 14. And 12, this goes right with that. Again, it says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Elohim and the faith of Yahshua. Because see, some people, they be trying to think, well, Yahshua got different commandments. Well, right here, it's talking about the Father right here. It's giving you a distinction between the Father, the commandments of Elohim, and the faith of Yahshua. So the commandments of the Father don't change. He didn't have any new commandments contrary to what he already gave. So when people, you know, want to debate that, that just just their own level of wickedness that they're trying to entertain. Because the thing about it, if you really love, right? You know, if you really love Yahuwah, then you will keep his commandments. Exactly. And that's the whole thing. And they think about it; it just changed the love. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. If you really, you know, uh huh. Like, Uh huh. If you would really love me, then you wouldn't treat me this way. Right. 
You know that right. <laughs> right. That don't say, well, I, all I have to do is love you. I can do whatever. I exactly. Want. No. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. No. That's right. But then they understand. Right. Oh, Right, right. That you right. <laughs> you gotta turn around, make it apply to them. Then maybe they'll get it. But it's just interesting how when you just put the whole dynamic together, because we read that the whole world is deceived. So if you got eighteen million people doing this thing right here, just by process of elimination, that cannot be of the Father. It just can't be. It just just the process of elimination. So if they're saying the whole world is deceived, but yet you're doing something that the whole world do, spiritually speaking, that's already off the bat. Especially if it's not lining up with what the commandments is. Say, is the whole world keeping the commandments? No, they're not keeping the commandments. And that means you need to keep the commandments then. That means it just makes sense to me. It just makes common sense. But again, people have to really put it all together and understand that, hey, this is how you identify who the saints is, scripturally speaking. No other place you're going to try to, you know, some, some pertinent to see say, no, nah, brother, the saints are those that are part of the church of God in Christ. Who told you that? You see what I'm saying? But people think like that. Because they look at what denominations right. are and not in, are you following right. the word of God? Right. Right, exactly. 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 Right, right. Right. That's word, correct. And not following an individual. Right. Name. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which scriptures tell us about falling at the man. Put not trust in man. Tell us, you know, not we, that's not something we can do. Because when we stand before him, we can't put that man out there and be like, uh, and be like, you know, <laughs> hey, he told me to do it. Same thing like they tried to do, you know, with Adam and Eve. Like he told me to do it. That okay? <laughs> that ain't what I told you to do. All right. So from here, we're gonna. I'm looking at my lesson. I got scriptures kind of. Different from we're gonna go on to uh Ezekiel twenty not Ezekiel twenty Daniel eleven twenty four oh man um let's look at Reve let's look at Revelation the thirteen chapter let's look at the next chapter here just read a little bit of that Revelation the thirteen chapter Revelation thirteen chapter and uh I'm gonna start out at verse one. And said, I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet was as the feet of a bear, his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and a, and a dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. And, I, and that's another thing. This right here kind of lets you know that, you know, these governments that we are in are not the end all to be all to truth. We ain't supposed to be pledging allegiance to these different governments like that. Because I don't know a single government on the face of this earth is subject to the laws and statutes of the Most High. None is this. Okay? And three says, I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and a deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So obviously, this beast is a superpower on the earth, right? Because they ask him, Who is able to make war with him? A lot of people ask that about America. Who is able to stand up against this American government? You know? Because even right now, you know, America gets away with doing a lot of things that other nations are, can't get away with. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't allow these people to have nuclear weapons, then what you're doing with nuclear weapons? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, uh, when, 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 do we, when do we hear about other governments putting sanctions on America? Like, mm -hmm. right, but we put, we, America put sanctions on other governments. 
And it's, it's and that that goes back to last week. We were talking about Babylon. The the uh, what's the term that it was used? The the lady, the lady above all. Or something it said. You know, we were trying to figure out who that was, and we were using examples of the American influence on the world. Well, that's another good example there because if this country, this worldwide country, can say we're going to put sanctions on Iran, sanctions on North Korea, and their whole economy is affected because America put sanctions on them. You see, it's, it, it, that that you know right there, right, power and who this Babylon is, is talking about or the daughter of Babylon in this day and age. Um, but it says, um, verse 5, it says, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given him to continue forty and two months. That's three and a half years. It could have said time, time and a half of times right there. It could have said 1260 days right there, but it said 40 and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against Elohim to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So the saints that have not escaped into that wilderness, because they in that wilderness for the same 42 months. If the ones that didn't escape, they told you, told you at the bottom of 12, that when they fled, he went to make war with the remnant. So the ones that ain't there is the remnant. Right? And, that's, and so it says, and it was given to him to make war with them and overcome them. And power was given... Uh, 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 giving him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose name are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. Okay? Uh, and then, we're not going to Read it, but you go into the end of the chapter, that's what we're talking about, the mark of the beast, that you're going to have to take that mark, and without that mark, you won't be able to buy or sell. And it's amazing how people got all these theories about the mark. Like they say, Sunday worship is the mark. You ever heard that? Yeah, some people say that. They say, that's Social Security number you got the mark. Or the visa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Visa, right, visa, right, visa, right. Uh-huh. Now I'm hearing the chest, you know. Right, the hand, right, the hand, right. You know. Yeah, but the chip is the only thing that really makes sense to me, yeah. because can't buy right, you can't buy a sale without exactly. You can't buy, and plus he already told you that's going to be on your right hand or forehead. He told you right there. So people try to spiritualize it, but you have one thing that I one rule of thumb that I go by is this: is when the father speaks in a literal. I mean, in a, in a um. In a symbolic dynamic, mm -hmm. he breaks it down symbolic. He tells you what it is. He don't leave you no room for interpretation. Mm -hmm. But some people, because they don't understand it, they create their own interpretation to teach other people your interpretation, but it's not bounded by Scripture. Mm -hmm. So anytime the Father speaks from a symbolic dynamic, Keep reading. He, he he tells you what that is. He tells you what that ram represented, what the he goat represented. He tells you the specific nations that they represent. So it's the same thing here. If he say that this mark is going to be placed on your forehead or your right hand, it don't require for you to go into some me metaphysical dynamic. See, the right hand is representing this, and the forehead is really talking about that. It ain't really talking about a real mark. Well, wait a minute, though. Whatever you think it is, he let you know that without it, you won't be able to buy and sell. So if we are buying and selling now, either we got it or that ain't what it is. Because... You with your philosophy, you buying and selling too. Mm -hmm. I don't know nobody alive today that ain't buying and selling. Mm -hmm. So, but when they put this thing out here that's going to be placed on your right hand or forehead, 
it ain't going to be no confusion or mystery toward what this is. And see, the whole thing about this is that there's a time frame for this. This is only going to be a three and a half year process. So when this thing begin to happen, we're going to know, we're gonna, we can start counting the time right off the bat. It's only going to, this only going to be for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. It ain't going to be no longer than three and a half years because it's all throughout the scriptures, time, times, half a times. So when it happened, we're going to be like, oh, man, we, we, need, we need to get somewhere where we're going to survive without having to deal with this for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Those who are not able to make it to the wilderness, and that wilderness is going to be the same wilderness that we came out of Egypt on. Matter of fact, that's what we're going to read right now. We're going to go into Daniel the, uh, Daniel the uh, 11 chapter. Daniel 11 chapter, I'm going to pick it up right in the middle of this prophecy. Uh, Daniel 11, I'm going to pick it up at 30. Uh, uh, 31. And 31, it says, an arm shall stand on his part. Daniel 11, chapter in the 31st verse. An arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and shall place the abomination and make it desolate. You know what? Hold on right here. I need, we need to talk about this, this temple for a second, because then it just jumped out at us. Let's go back into Revelation, Revelation 11 chapter. Let's, let's go there, then we're going to come back here. Revelation 11 chapter. And see, we alluded to this last week, too, in, in part one of this lesson, but we didn't get to this passage here. Revelation 11 chapter, verse 1. Because we read in Matthew and we read in Timothy that the abomination of desolation is going to stand in the holy place. And the holy place is Jerusalem. That's the only place in the scriptures that he described as his holy place. So here in Revelation 11, chapter and verse 1, it reads, um, uh, and absolutely, I just read the comment. And that's exactly what's going to happen. But we're going to read something specifically concerning that right here in Revelation 11 and 1. It says, and there was given me a reed like a, unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of Elohim. And an altar in them that worship therein. But the court which is without or outside the temple, leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles. And again, you all are going to see that capital G is talking about some Europeans. Gentiles and the holy city should they tread underfoot 40 and two months. That's the same three and a half years. They're going to tread the holy city for 42 months. And the place that's given to them is that court, which is outside the, the, the temple. Mm -hmm. Right now, <coughs> the dome of the rock, we talked about that last week, is the actual temple site. Mm -hmm. They're not going to tear the dome of the rock down. Mm -hmm. They're going to build right, right, which is what this, this is saying, mm -hmm. right outside the temple. Mm -hmm. And who's going to do it? The Gentiles. People think, see, and this is where people mess up. They don't know prophecy. They think that's Israel over there. Yeah. When scripture is tell, clearly telling you those, those are Gentiles over there that got this. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And, and so it says that they're going to tread there for the 40 and 2 months, three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And they started trying to build it. Right. Right. Uh huh. They were just talking about it, how they figure out where it's going to be. Right. And they keep it like, out here, things is going to happen soon, it's going to happen soon. Right. So that it probably be this year, maybe they've already started. Oh, yeah. So uh huh. Yeah. Absolutely, but they definitely doing the thing. But it's just a beautiful thing how the scriptures let you know because you got people thinking that those are the real Hebrews over there, and the scriptures clearly tell you that these are Gentiles over there that is is given to. It can't be us because we're not there. At least those of us who know we're not, and the ones that are there, they ain't even supposed to be there. And I I proclaim that boldly. Israel don't like to hear that, but we we're not supposed to be over there in that land. Gentiles got that land over there. We supposed to be out of the land. 
Uh, and he said, I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy. Look at that time, 1,260 days. He could have said 40 in two months. He could have said time, time and a half. It's the same time period. He gives us four designations of the exact same time period. And all of these things are all happening concurrently. The man of sin is doing his thing with the remnant that didn't escape to the wilderness. Here in the Holy Land, the Gentiles are raising up their temple and doing all the things in the temple. They're going to be doing the sacrifice and all that in the temple. And then these two witnesses are going to be there in the land, just these two. And it says, um, verse 4 says, These are the two olive trees and two candlesticks standing before the Elohim of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoured their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must be in this manner be killed. These have power to shed heaven that it rained not in the days of their prophecy and have power over the waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all the plagues as often as they will. Now, a lot of people have different, uh, different interpretations of who these two witnesses are. Sometimes I say, okay, this is Moses and Elijah or this is uh, um, two angels or whatever. I'm not going to get into that. Only thing I know is that whoever these two witnesses are, whoever they be, when they get to doing their thing during this time period, we all are going to know about it. And those of us who are going to be alive at that time, we ain't going to be able to, we ain't going to debate anything else concerning this truth. Because whatever come out those two witnesses' mouth, that's the truth. Wherever I'm wrong at anything that I'm teaching, I ain't going to be wrong at that time. Because whatever coming out their mouth and them people going to be coming at them trying to do to them. And they're going to be doing, they're going to be just like Moses. They're going to be like Moshe and Aharon back when they did their thing. When they were doing signs and wonders before the people, which was all representative of our deliverance out of that slavery. This is, it's no different from what's going on right here. They got all these signs to do all of these things given to them by the Most High. Uh, in verse um, 7 it says, And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that is sent out of bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Right. Well, we're going to know before that because he would have already started 42 months prior to that. Matter of fact, yeah. Like Matthew 24 says, when he stand in the holy place, that's the temple that these Gentiles build. We ain't going to have no, we're going to know who he is at that point. See, other people probably because, and see, he also is going to be doing little signs and wonders as well. That if it was possible, he will deceive the very elect. But because we know. Because like, I'm just saying right now, you, how many people do you think on this earth believe that those are the true Israelites over there? You see what I'm saying? So you already deceived right off the bat. So when this person come over there and he's going to be and he's going to start off. There's another script talking about he's going to start off speaking peace, bringing peace to the Middle East. See, that's a beautiful thing. That ain't no beautiful thing to us because you got two people over there that they, they don't belong to none of them. But the world ain't trying to hear us tell them that. We have to, we, we are supposed to be caught up in this great peace over there. After all this time, there's peace in the land over there. Lebanon and, and, and Israel is hand in hand because the dude done bought peace over there. We supposed that we and we are supposed to be rejoicing over that. But we are not gonna rejoice because we know his, what's going on, right? Right. So that's how, I, like I said, when Yahshua say, if it was possible, they will deceive the very elect. You have to know this book to, to be in the call of the very elect. So when you see these things happening right in front of our face and everybody, your friends and stuff, man, man, that's a beautiful thing. What's going on over there? Y'all see that beautiful stuff over there? These people getting along and this, that, that. We're going to be like, oh, no. We're going to, our mindset going to be, okay, I think we about need to get up out of here at this time. Because stuff is about to go on. But like you say, the building of the temple is the thing that we're looking at. 
That's what we're looking at. It ain't being built by us. It's being built by what the scriptures say that it's being built by the Gentiles. Absolutely. Uh, it says, uh, and then it says, uh, verse 8 says, And their dead body shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom, and Egypt, where our master was crucified. That's Jerusalem is talking about right there. This also lets you know, again, you got Israelites going over there like it's supposed to be a beautiful thing. Scripture tells you that right now, he called that Sodom and Gomorrah right now. You see, I said it last week, but this scripture is, is telling you exactly the same thing. It ain't no beautiful thing going on over there in the land. I don't care how beautiful it might appear to be. It's not, it's not, it's not that, that the father going to look at it and be like, oh yeah, that's a beautiful thing happening in, in my land over there. He says right there that it is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt where our master was crucified. He was crucified in Jerusalem. And, and, and what's interesting is that I had someone ask me um, recently say, you know, they're having a trip to, you know, to Jerusalem. You want to go? And I was like, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'll be going to what, what is now the people in there. Yep. Absolutely. A absolutely. A absolutely. You'd be surprised how many people don't want to hear that because they are so. And again, that's us being deceived by that because we know that's our home. But because that's your home, that don't mean that you need to run and go there. You know, just like I said yesterday, you know, when your mom or dad, you know, they done bought you a nice little playground set, whatever. But then you're on punishment. You're going to look at that playground set all day long. You can't get on that playground set until they tell you you can get back on that playground set. It's not a hard process. It's not a hard dynamic. Some of us used to test that out. Some of us used to go out and do it anyway. And then you, your parents come out, didn't I tell you not to get on that? And now we done extended the punishment. Or you say, like the person who has a home. You know, you didn't take care of it. Correct. Now, went to bankruptcy. Now Correct. Correct. And you build, you might have built the home. So yeah, so you can't sit there and say, yeah, that's my house and somebody else is living there. It's not your house. Man, anymore. not not no more. Like you and like I said, you could have had built that house. And you can't you, you can't even pull the the, 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 the the apples off the tree that you planted out there in the backyard. Mm -hmm. That's a that's man. Man, man, man. But huh? Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, property taxes, you know, and built the fence around there that you still paying notes for us to lean on there. But that's how my childhood home got taken away because my sister was supposed to take care of that. And she did some work on there and they ended up taking the house, man. Now the house was toned down. I can't even see the house that I lived in all my life. But, um. Uh, yeah. Right, so right. If, if people, most people can sit there and understand that, like, if you just like what you started off with, just like what you said, yeah. You started off with that. Remember, if you love me, keep my but if you love me, you would, it's the same dynamic. You can't see the reality in this, but you can see the reality in in your life, and it's the same doggone. It ain't no difference, man. Yeah, but that that that's that's a heavy. So that's why you know I tell, like I said, people don't really want to hear it. But I'm like, man, look, it ain't nothing in scripture can show me where over there is where we need to be. Not in the land. Now, if you talking about going to the wilderness, oh, absolutely, I'm all for that because scripture lets me know that that is the place of safety where we're gonna have to be at this particular time, this time that we're talking about. Um. Uh, but yeah, I, I had to, and I had to remember to use that Revelation eleven eight when I talk about this because when he says, "Hey, it's called Sodom and Egypt, and you want me to go over there and, and and celebrate and have fun and cry because our ancestors was here and all that," no, -uh, no, that that ain't that ain't for me. Yeah, yeah, graves and and, and the heathen room controlling everything, telling you where you need to go and no, you can't go over there. Nah. And uh, let me see your visa. Let me see, man. Man, one of them he just asked me about a visa. I wouldn't even know how to act. I, I'm scared. Ask me about a visa in England and in France. Tell me when I need to get up out of here. Hey, you can have it. 
No, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not ready for, for that in the land right there. It, it, it says, uh, and it says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Uh, again, okay, verse 9 says, and they of the people and kindred and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not allow or suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And right, and here it is, here it says, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry. I would doubt if this was around Christmas time, right? I ain't going to say that that's what it is, but that, it uses, the way it uses these words here. Because look, it says, and they shall make merry and shall send gifts one to another because the two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. How did they torment them? Because the doctrine that they were speaking was contrary to world religions. They will do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I know they're talking about the uh, Festival of Lights is at what they, what they call Hanukkah now, but that's in that time frame in Hanukkah, like December, the winter or December 25th. Yeah, when they actually were doing it. Right, yep, exactly. But that's, that's exactly, that's all the same time. Like you said, December 25th is the exact same time. But also, know this too. That again, we're talking about at a time where how could John the Revelator, how could he conceive a time where there's something going on in Jerusalem and we over here know what's going on over there? That's, that's impossible in his day and age. But right now, CNN, whatever, can broadcast something and the whole world knows it. The, yeah. Right. But this is what he prophesied. The whole world is giving gifts one to another because these two cats that has been doing their thing in the Holy Land for three and a half years, they finally got killed. These two have been bashing my religion, bashing my traditions, bashing all this stuff and been killing people. God, so you know they're going to be called terrorists, okay? Mm -hmm. See, ain't that something? Ten years ago, we ain't even heard that term, not to the extent, right? Mm -hmm. Before 911, you didn't really hear terrorists like that. Because it's the same with, was it, um, what's the one that they had on TV of, uh, what's the terrorist that, that they finally found and, this is my son, and they actually showed it on TV that they found so him. Yeah. Okay, and okay. And how everybody kind of rejoiced over him. Yes, so yes. So it just kind of the same. It, yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely, it would be just like the same thing. And then what make that so bad, we don't got to get into it, was you, you know the whole thing was a lie about Iraq, but they caused the whole world to believe the lie right there too, mm -hmm. that this man had nuclear weapons, right? And so like you say, so now the whole world is rejoicing over something that this government set up in the first place, you know? But anyway, yeah, but like you say, that is absolutely the example of what's going to happen to these two witnesses. And like I said, and then also the thing that you can pick up here is this, is that even though we call this time a time of great tribulation, it's not a great tribulation for the whole world. It's a great tribulation for us. Because that person that don't know no better, right, he's going to be like, man, man, go ahead and take the chip, man. It's just a way that we you know it's secure. Because can't nobody steal, you know, your wallet, whatever. You just go in there like that, man. It's cool. I can do that like that. that and so it ain't no tribulation for them. Mm -hmm. But for us, that's not going to be part of that system. It's deep tribulation for us. So because of the fact that these people over the world are giving gifts one to another, that lets you know it wasn't no tribulation for them. But for us, it's going to be heavy tribulation. So... From here, let's go into Luke 21, just to, um, just again, just to see the whole dynamic of what's going on over there. Luke 21, and uh, Luke 21, and I'm just going to pick this up at the 23rd verse. Luke 21 and 23, and, and the prophesying concerning that, it says, it says, But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, 
for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trod down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So again, the scriptures let you know that the Israelites is going to be led in captive of all nations, while Jerusalem is going to be tried down of the Gentiles. That is, is concurrent. It's happening at the same time. We know where the Gentiles is over in the land, ruling over the land, trying down the land. It don't say we're going to be trying down the land with them. We're going to be everywhere else except for the land. Right? And, and so, I mean, man, it's, it's like, it's, it's, you know, it's one thing when you go, go into one verse and then you can read it, but you got to be able to go into a few other places to see the exact same thing. And, and then just to let you know that this is the end time, the 25th verse said, And there should be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars upon the earth, distress of nations, with perplexity to see in the ways worn, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. The Son of Man coming, that signifies the end of the time of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. The time of the Gentiles don't end no time before that. So we are living in the time of the Gentiles. It, it, it's just not even a hard thing to even imagine. As long as you're paying taxes to a government that you are not a part of, that's the Gentile time that we're living in. Simple as that. And so again, so until that time ends, this is letting me know that Israel shall be in, led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trying down of the Gentiles. That's your time frame right there. How we know it ended? Because the whole world going to see the Son of Man coming in the power cloud of great glory. No private interpretation there. So this lets me know that I ain't supposed to be in no Jerusalem until I'm out of the captivity of the nations. And I can't bring myself out the captivity of the nations. Okay, so now let's go on back to that Daniel the uh, 11 chapter. Daniel the 11 chapter. And again, so we pick this up at 31, talking, I'm talking about the same entity here that's going to be doing all these things here. Uh, 11 and 31, it says, An arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, because that's what they're going to be doing, doing daily sacrifice, reinstituting daily sacrifices there, and they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. So, you know, again, there had always been previous forms of this abomination desolation. Like you read about it in the um, Apocrypha, Maccabees. Ain't that what they did in the temple? Abomination of desolation was there. Mm -hmm. 70 AD was a form of that. When Titus came in there and sacked Jerusalem. That was the last time we was collectively in our own land during that time. But this is talking about the end time here. And um, you're going to see how. It says, uh, 32. And as such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their Elohim shall be strong and do exploits. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame and by captivity and by spoil many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, or to make them clean, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. And the king, or this king here, shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every Elohim, and shall speak marvelous things against the Elohim of Elohim, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that is determined shall be done. So apparently, while he's speaking all these things against the true creator of heaven and earth, the witnesses are going to be 
counteracting all the stuff that he he's saying. Because it's all at the same exact time. It says, 37, Neither shall he regard the Elohim of his fathers, nor the desire of women, <laughs> nor regard any Elohim. Now look at desire of women. It's like, man, it's, uh, it's really kind of weird how this whole homosexuality movement is increasing in these days. It's on a level that we have never seen ever before. And then they're going to regard the two individuals as probably conspiracy theorists. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, yeah. They're, they're, they're absolutely not going to be politically correct. They're going to be haters. All these terrorists, haters, the, just the whole, the whole gamut. Because right now, if you say anything negative about homosexuality, just say somebody that's known, it's front page news. And they become victimized. Mm -hmm. We've never seen them like that in, in this lifetime before. But... Yeah. 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 So, obviously, this man is saying he's going to be down for all that. <laughs> he, and he might be gay himself. Because that's what he's basically saying. If he don't have no desire for women, then, you know, that, to me, what is that saying? Mm -hmm. And no regard any Elohim, because a lot of these people now, even among our millennials, man, I've never seen this atheism movement to be as big as it is now. Mm -hmm. Especially among these young people, man. Oh, we don't, we don't, man, we don't believe in none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. They be boldly proclaiming atheism now. Mm -hmm. And that's what this dude is talking about. Uh, it says, uh, no regard any Elohim, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the Elohim of forces, and the God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with the strange Elohim, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. He shall enter also into the glorious land. That's Jerusalem. The holy, holy land. And many countries shall be overthrown. But check this out. It says, but these shall escape out of his hand. Even Edom. Moab and the chief children of Ammon. Mm -hmm. That's the wilderness right there. Remember last week I was saying when we came up out of Egypt, we tried to go through Edom. I said, no, you can't go through there. The father said, go around. We tried to go through Ammon. Nope, don't go through Ammon. We tried to go through Moab. They don't want you to go through Moab. You got to go around them. These are the same three names. He said, these three will escape out of his hand. We then we read in, in uh, Isaiah 16, he said he told Moab to be a covert to the outcast. We the outcast. He told them to be a covert, a hid, hide us at this time. See, so again, it's too, and you go through so many scriptures, but it's telling you the exact same, it's giving you the historical, prophetic truth of what's going on. But if we want to escape from this man of sin, this the wilderness right here is talking about. This is the time we got to flee. Forty and two months right here. Edom, Moab, and the chief children of Ammon will escape by this hand. Meaning that if we make our way to that area at that time, the man of sin ain't going to be there. According to what we just read here. It said, he shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold, silver, and over all the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans and Ethiopians shall be at his door, at his steps. So that means he's coming west from the Holy Land west. This is what? This is northern Africa right here. Okay. It says, but Titans out of the east and out of the north, that's Russia. That's North Asia. 
It's talking about Magog and Gog is what it's talking about there. Shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in a glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. Then right at the beginning of the 12th chapter, the first verse said, at, at that time, the time we just read about, at that time shall Mikael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, the same thing Yahshua said in Matthew 24. There should be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust. So this lets you know that everything that we had just read in the 11th chapter is prophetic. It has not happened yet. You got some people that read that letter and say, oh, man, that happened during the time of this, that, and it, it ain't happened yet. You got to read the whole thing. Because if you go into the 12th chapter, it lets you know that it has not happened yet. <coughs> okay. They feel like they don't have to read this text. You know? Right. That's they true. That, that's true. That's true. Them, Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. But again, when Yahshua said, as spoken of by Daniel the prophet, let them read, understand. Yahshua told you, look, I'm only giving you the, just a little, uh, I'm just giving you the chapter, the, the, the little plan, just a little few things. But if you want to know this thing fully, you got to go back to read the prophets. <laughs> That's what Yahshua told them. You got to go back and read the prophets. I'm only giving you just a little bit right here. I ain't giving you the whole thing. Uh, okay, and then he says, uh, and then he says, um, verse 3, it says, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn mean to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But you, that da old Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And that's what we live in. We live in a time now where this knowledge is being increased now. Yeah. You know, our people didn't have this understanding 30, 40 years ago. Right, exactly. And he said knowledge should be increased. Okay, so again, that's the uh, time that we're living in now. Let's go on to uh, Ezekiel, the 20th chapter. Ezekiel, the 20th chapter. Oh man, I love it. This is he this <laughs> Ezekiel twenty chapter. He he's raw and uncut with it here. Ezekiel twenty chapter, and I'm gonna start this off at the first verse. Matter of fact, I'm gonna read a lot of this, so we probably probably end it on this one. Ezekiel twentieth and verse one, it says, um Man. And it came to pass in the seventh and the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of Yah and set before me. Then came the word of Yah unto me, saying, saying, Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel, and say unto them, Thus says Yah Elohim, Are you come to inquire of me? As I live, says Yahuwah Elohim, I will not be inquired of you. Will thou judge them, son of man? Will thou judge them? Cause them to know the abomination of their fathers. And say, Unto them, thus says Yahuwah Elohim, in a day when I chose Israel and lifted up my hand unto the seed of the house of Yaakov and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lift up my hand unto them, saying, I am Yah your Elohim, in the day that I lift up my hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into a land I had a spy for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. And that's interesting because we saw that the man of sin is he going to go into the glory, plant his holy tabernacle in the glorious land. We just read that, right? Verse 7. Then said I to them, cast ye away every man the abomination of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am Yah your Elohim. And they rebelled against me and would not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away the abomination of their eyes, neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. 
Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them, in bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Wherefore I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt, and brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them statutes and showed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Moreover, also I gave them my Shabbats to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am Yahuwah that sanctified them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes, and they despised my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them, and my Shabbats they greatly polluted. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen in whose sight I bought them out. Now that's interesting. First it said, I didn't do it in front of the Egyptians. Yeah. Now I said, I didn't do it among the heathen in whose sight I bought them out. Yet also I lift up my hand unto them in the wilderness that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them flowing with milk and honey, which is, again, the glory of all lands. Because they despised my judgments and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Shabbats, for, they, for their heart went after their idols. Nevertheless, my eyes spared them from destroying them, neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. But I said unto their children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in the statutes of your fathers, neither observe their judgments, nor defile yourselves with their idols. I am Yahuwah your Elohim, walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And hollow my Shabbats, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am Yahuwah your Elohim. Notwithstanding, the children rebelled against me. They walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgments to do them, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. They polluted my Shabbats. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew my hand and walked for my name, saying that it should not be polluted in the sight of heathen, in whose sight I brought them forth. I lift up my hand unto them also in the wilderness, that I will scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through the countries. Because they had not executed my judgments, but had despised my statues and had polluted my Shabbats, and that our eyes were after their father's idols. Wherefore I gave also statues uh, that were not good and judgments whereby they should not live. And I polluted them in their own gifts and that they caused to pass through the fire all that opened the womb that I might, might make them desolate to the end that they might know that I am Yahuwah. Therefore, son of man, speak unto the house of Israel and say unto them, Thus says Yahuwah Elohim, Yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me, and that they have committed a trespass against me. For when I bought them into the land, now he's talking about he brought us into the land, that's out of the wilderness, into the land, for the which I lifted up my hands to give it to them. Then they saw every high hill and all the thick trees, and they offered there their sacrifices, and there they presented the provocation of their offering. There also they made their sweet savior and poured out their drink offerings. Then I said to them, What is the high place where unto you go? And the name thereof is called Bama unto this day. Wherefore thus Therefore say you, the house of Israel, thus says Yah Elohim, Are you polluted after the manner of your fathers, and commit you whoredom after their abominations? For when you offer your gifts, when you make your sons to pass through the fire, you pollute yourselves with all your idols even unto this day. And shall I be inquired of you, O house of Israel? As I live, says Yahuwah Elohim, I will not be inquired by you. And that which come into your mind shall not be at all that you say we will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. As I live, says Yah Elohim, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will inherit it. Now, this is prophecy he's, he's about to give us here. He says, um, and, 
uh, and I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered with a mighty hand, with a stretched out arm and fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people and there will I plead with you face to face. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, says Yah Elohim. He's going to do the same thing over, just like he did the first time, right? He says, and I will cause you to pass under the rod and will bring you into the bond of the covenant. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am Yah. So he's letting them know that, look, I'm going to bring y'all out of the countries, and I'm going to plead with y'all in the wilderness. But those that are still going to be rebellious in the wilderness, you will not enter to the land of Israel. So and understand that because I done talk to some people. Some people say, well, bro, we're in the wilderness now. You're not in the wilderness now. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well that yeah, that was some of that was Matthew twenty four yeah. when he said the same thing, don't think to take anything out your house oh, no, and bring it out your right. Yeah, that's part of Matthew twenty four when he when he's Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, right. This year where they have these statues and they have these fires and people are actually going and running into these fires. Right, mm hmm And when people have talked about them, they actually, you know, uh, you know, when people say things about what they're doing, mm -hmm. they criticize those people that are yeah. against them that doing it because I think it was a man who passed away okay. this year. I think they had a mayor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, running into the fires. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One thing that they come in my mind, I believe about how the Indian people had that little thing where they walking through the on the coals of fire. Oh yeah. Yeah. But like you say, and that's the thing, all of these different traditions that exist are not new traditions. Mm -hmm. But because we have been so desensitized to doing these things, it's almost like it's part entertainment, part you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But we never, ever look at the historical dynamics of where these traditions come from. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why Yahshua tell us about keeping these traditions. We transgress the commandments of Yah by these traditions. Just like these holidays that the people do today. They dress it up to make them seem so beautiful, but that's only because we are ignorant of the origins of these Things that they do. Because as a child, when you didn't know no better as a child, all you saw was the beautiful imagery that you had. The different songs that were sung during these events, right? That was called Burning Man. What is it? Oh, oh, okay. I'm not really totally familiar with that. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. But but absolutely, I mean, but here it's 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 clear right here that wherever countries we in is not the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Right? Because he says he's gonna bring us to the wilderness and that the land of Israel is not the wilderness either. Because he says we won't be able we won't be allowed to enter into Israel. And this Israel is the Israel that we want to enter in, because it'll be the one that will be where the kingdom of the most high is in. Yeah. What's over there not is not is 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 Sodom. Mm -hmm. Sodom. That's what's over there, not Sodom. And see, we we said that last week. Remember, we were talking about the parades and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the scripture confirmed it to us. He said, spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Yeah. Wow. 
So, so I'm saying, hey, it's, but, you know, it's just amazing how when people hear certain things, it would almost sound like it's opinionated, whatever. Because even when I started off last week, I said, well, I have a philosophy about going over to the land. Remember, I, I started off, and I only started off like that because I had not really read any scriptures specifically. But once the scriptures start speaking yeah. and agreeing with what was being said, then it's no more philosophy. Is what the scripture is saying. Just like, like, like we, just like when we were sitting there and we were saying, you know, well, yeah, Israel, they got all this gay stuff going on, whatever, right? It sounds like it's our opinion, mm-hmm. but then we turn in the scripture and say, he said it's spiritually called Sodom. Dang, mm-hmm. it ain't no more opinion, that, even though it wasn't opinion when we said it, because mm-hmm. we know that that's what's going on over there. Mm-hmm. But the scripture called it Sodom all day long. It only said what we had already said mm-hmm. without reading the scripture, yeah. you know. But yeah, but anyway, and so this is what he's saying. He says, uh, and at the end of verse 38, he says, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am Yah. So, man, I would hate to even be over there not calling myself trying to build something over there and do all this stuff there. And the father like, look, you ain't, you ain't going to be in the kingdom, so you, go, you might as well you know, get up out of there. You might as well do, go the same way that the rest of the heathen is going. Because that's how the father operate. When we was in Egypt, we were, we were subject to Egyptians. That's why there were certain things that we couldn't do that we knew that the father required of us to do because we was in the land of our captivity. That's why he kept telling them, he said, look, tell Moses, tell Pharaoh to let my people go that they might worship me. First, he told them, let them go out into the wilderness that I, they might have a celebration to me. He told them that first. In other words, what I want them to do, they're not going to be able to do it inside of Egypt. Simple, simple dynamic. And we kind of see some of that even today, how hard it is to do certain things that we know the Father required because we're subject to Egypt, to this here. And so... The same dynamic is the same thing that we, we see here that that once we come into the wilderness and he's pleading with us face to face, just like how back in the day, we were not supposed to be bringing Egypt into the wilderness, even though Egypt was really all we knew. See, ain't that something? It just lets you know how you have to really be renewed in a whole different mindset than you was when you was in ignorance. Yeah, because he's not just like they they have it to where the reason of the is, and they hear it come December twenty fifth coming around. Now we're like, ooh, ooh, let's build. A, yeah. Let's chop down the tree. Right. And decorate it with you know. Yeah. Silver, you know, right. Right. So there you go. Right. You know, right. And then we'll try to use the excuse that you know we'll try to use the excuse that uh. That oh take take care uh, and enjoy the rest of your day, Andrea. We try to use excuse that man, but see we doing this in the in the, for the name of the Father, you know. But the Father don't operate like that. He do not operate. You 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 can't mix the worship of heathens with the worship of the Father. He don't uh, he don't allow that mixture to take place. I mean it's just something as simple as just like Saul. When they win the battle, and then he see the oxen over there, he starts sacrificing, thinking that he's doing the Father's will, right? But he wasn't doing the Father's will because the Father might give him of the tribe of Benjamin to do that. But in his mind, you couldn't tell him that this was nothing that I'm not doing for the Father because these oxen are good, but I'm not eating them. I'm sacrificing them to the glory of the Father. And people that don't know no better, it's easy to fall into that trap. So like you say, we get there and we're going to be wanting to do all the stuff that we did by the traditions of the land that we were in. And the father don't, don't, don't operate like that. And that's why these people are going to be considered rebels because they were so used to doing things their way that they are not going to submit themselves to the way of the father. Um, he says... Uh, in verse um, 39, 
He says, As for you, O house of Israel, says Yah Elohim, go you, serve every one his idols, and, and hereafter also, if you would not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name, no more with your gifts and with your idols. For in my holy mountain, in the mountain of the house of Israel, says Yah Elohim, there shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. There will I accept them, and there will I require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations with all your holy things. I will accept you with the sweet Savior when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein you have been scattered, and I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. And see, again, like I say, I can say it's my opinion, but my opinion is based on the scriptures. When I go in Israel, I'm going to be sanctified in the, for the whole nation. Ain't going to be thinking, oh, that's one of them black Hebrew Israelites. No, they're going to know. Because when they say that, that's, they say that that's what we think, that we're the black Hebrew Israelites. No, when you're here, you're going to be sanctified as the servants, the children of the Most High mm -hmm. in front of the whole world. Ain't going to be no debates, ain't going to be no what, that's what they think, whatever, because that's, what that's all it is right now. Any of us that go over there now, nah, they're like, yeah, no, they, they think that they're the children of Israel. <laughs> you ain't going to be putting that on me when I go into the land. <laughs> I ain't going to be somebody just thinking I'm, I'm an Israelite, whatever. He said, you will be sanctified, and I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. And you shall know, and a little bit, he said, you shall know that I am Yah when I shall bring you into the land of Israel, into the country for the which I lifted up my hand to give it to your fathers. And there shall you remember your ways and all your doings wherein you have been defiled. And you shall loathe yourself in your own sight for all your evils that you have committed. And you shall know that I am Yahuwah when I have wrought you for my name's sake, not according to your wicked ways, nor according to your corrupt doings, O you house of Israel, says Yah Elohim. Moreover, the word of Yah came unto me, saying, Son of man, it was another place here. I might have skipped over it. It's another place here. Where is that? When he says, uh, and the heathen shall know. I am so embarrassed. I don't know where that place is. Uh... He says, and the heathen shall know in that day. Oh, man, the people of the land, never have, where is that at? Let's see, Ezekiel 22. My, this should be one of my favorite places. That's 28, 29. That's 29. Okay, uh. I know it's in Ezekiel. I might be looking dead over it. But that's what it says, and the heathen shall know. Maybe I need to I need to search that out. But let's see, twenty two moment and then one can I See I'm just not thinking of that. I should've should have Huh? Yeah, I should have jotted it down, but that is a powerful, powerful place. I know people probably be looking at me saying, Brother, I know what that's this. Uh Ezekiel twenty. But it says in that day shall the heathen know uh 30 is that 30 30 30 it's in ezekiel uh i can search it hold on one second yeah matter of fact let me look at my bible gateway 